This is a brief video on postpartum hemorrhage. We're going to be giving a brief overview of postpartum hemorrhage, talking about some of the major causes of postpartum hemorrhage, talking about medications for postpartum hemorrhage, specifically for uterine adeny leading to postpartum hemorrhage, and also discussing some of the other management that providers might pursue for postpartum hemorrhage. This image here shows the blood supply going to the uterus, which of course is the major source of blood in postpartum hemorrhage. And of course, a quick definition for postpartum hemorrhage is that it is excess bleeding following childbirth. So let's jump into a quick overview. Postpartum hemorrhage is defined in 24 hours of delivery, a loss of over 500 mils of blood after a vaginal delivery, or in a C-section, a loss of 1000 mils of blood. So half a liter after a vaginal delivery in 24 hours, or one full liter after a C-section delivery in 24 hours. The signs and symptoms of postpartum hemorrhage include faintness and lightheadedness with standing and straining, also increased heart rates and increased respiratory rates. If postpartum hemorrhage becomes very severe, you might have some signs of shock. And uh, the signs of severe blood loss in shock include low blood pressure, feeling cold, that's cold extremities, as well as loss of consciousness. And hypovolemia can eventually lead to that loss of consciousness. Some risk factors for postpartum hemorrhage are infection, like chorioaminitis, prolonged labor, and multiple gestations. The causes of postpartum hemorrhage can generally be broken down into the four T's, and we're going to be working through them in that format. First is tone. If you have a problem with tone, such as uterine atony. Uterine atony is essentially the inability of the uterus to contract. Uh, one sign on physical exam is that you have a boggy uterus. So that keyword boggy might signal you toward uterine atony. Uterine atony can also be uh, kind of precipitated by retained placental tissue and infection. Prolonged labor might contribute to uterine atony, and uh, one easy way to think of that is that the uterus is tired after a long labor, and that can lead it to, to, to not be able to contract. An inverted uterus is also a sign of problem with tone, with uterine tone. And a sign of an inverted uterus on physical exam is an absent uterus. When you go to feel in the lower abdomen for that uterus and you don't even feel it, it's possible that the uterus is inverted. It has birthed itself is one way to think of it. It has contracted so hard that it has become inside out and birthed itself. Another cause of postpartum hemorrhage is trauma. You can have injury to the uterus, cervix, vagina, or perineum, and these can happen both before and during delivery. Um, these most often happen during a precipitous delivery that might have been unexpected or might have led to uterine rupture or a tear in the perineum. Signs of trauma are obviously lacerations, fresh blood and lacerations. Perineal injury can be broken down into four degrees. The first degree of perineal injury is just the mucosa of the perineum. Uh, this bleeds the least, obviously. Second degree perineal injury involves the perineal body. That's a little bit posterior to the vagina, uh, between the vagina and the rectum, uh, between the vagina and the, and the anus, the rectal opening. Third degree perineal injury goes all the way back to involve the rectal sphincter, and if the injury involves the rectal mucosa, essentially forming a fistula between the rectum and the vagina, it would be called a fourth degree perineal injury. There are some tissue related causes to postpartum hemorrhage. This is mainly retained uh, tissue from the placenta or fetus. Uh, retained placenta is the most common cause. And one quick way to think about this is that the placenta, when it forms, burrows deeply into the uterus. Um, when that happens, the blood vessels uh, from the placenta are in contact with some of the blood vessels in the uterus. They're not in direct contact, they don't directly exchange blood, but there is blood products flowing freely between them. Um, and when the blood spills from the placenta, if the placenta were to rupture, or if the placenta were to tear, then those vessels in the placenta are then open to the outside world through the uterus and through the vagina. And if there's a piece of the placenta still exchanging blood products with the mom, that can lead to significant blood loss. This can be 
this can this can be precipitated when the placenta is burrowed deeply into the uterus, um, such as in placenta accreta, placenta increta, and placenta percreta. And those are listed in orders of severity. Placenta accreta is when the placenta is slightly burrowed deeply into the uterus. Uh, increta is a little worse, and percreta I think of as perforating the uterus and maybe involving external or, uh, organs, including uh, the, the surrounding structures of the uterus. Tissue-related problems leading to postpartum hemorrhage can be diagnosed with ultrasound or placental inspection. Um, and that's when you look at the placenta after birth. And if you notice that there are blood vessels going all the way to the edge of the placenta, then you think that there might still be a piece of the placenta, an accessory lobe, or a piece remaining after a placental tear still in the uterus that's producing that blood loss. A sign on physical exam that might make you think that there's retained placenta is a firm uterus. And lastly, the last T is thrombin. This is essentially when there's a failure to clot blood on the mother's end, such as from coagulation disorders and DIC. Next up are some medications for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. First of all, you can treat dehydration just as you always would. Um, that's fluids through IVs. You can also use oxytocin if your problem is uterine atony. Uh, oxytocin contracts the uterus and prolongs contractions. You might next consider some other management before going on to the other medications used for urine atony. And we'll be talking about those here, but don't forget the other management when, when considering postpartum hemorrhage. Some other drugs include the prostaglandin analogs, misoprostol and carboprost. Side effects of these are, of course, fever and shivering. And lastly, you can use ergo drugs like methergonavine, which vasoconstricts decreasing blood supply to the bleeding organ. So the theory here is that if you reduce the amount of blood going to the uterus, uh, you're going to bleed less through the uterus. And that's the same kind of concept behind uter uterine artery embolism, which we'll talk about on the next slide. There's a brand name drug that combines oxytocin and ergometrine, and that's called centometrine. Some other management ideas for postpartum hemorrhage are going to be talked about here. You might want to perform a uterine massage that's showed in those diagrams on the right there. Surgery or sutures might be indicated to repair lacerations. If there is a uterine tear, you might use sutures to repair that uterus, or you might do a complete total hysterectomy if it's hopeless hysterectomy in severe cases, as we said. Uterine artery embolization is an option, and that, of course, uses the same theory that if you reduce the blood supply to the bleeding organ, you're going to reduce bleeding. Um, uterine artery embolization is done with the help of interventional radiologists. You can also ligate the uterine arteries. That's usually done through obstetrics. And lastly, you could do a DNC to remove retained products of conception. This has been a brief video on postpartum hemorrhage. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.